afternoon, everyone. We are here for a brief history of Ogopogo and Shushwagi and the location of our first exploratory dive, which we'll be doing as soon as the weather smartens up a little bit. It's early in uh, March here, March 9th, and up here it is way too cold for that sort of thing. Yeah, but the days are marching by quickly. So uh, if you're on our underwater um, YouTube channel or on our Facebook page and also part of our, our other group and YouTube channel, the Awaken the World channel, you've already probably seen the inside of our home. And if not, welcome, of course. Today we're just going to have a little discussion, a little bit of a brief history about uh, Ogopogo and Shishwagi and where we're going to be going for our very first exploratory dive as we search for everything uh, from lost treasure along steamship routes to you know exploratory looks at the bottom and at the fish population at the life that's down there as well as any other issues that may be cropping up that we should become aware of as as human beings on this planet so when we're talking about Ogopogo, of course, we're talking about Okanagan Lake in the Okanagan here in beautiful BC, Canada. And we're going to discuss a tiny bit, a, bit, a bit about Okanagan Lake a little bit later. So the very first sort of recorded European sighting in the area was uh, around 1873 by a Mrs. Susan Allison, who was an author and a pioneer. And she reported seeing a serpent-like creature which really mirrored the, uh, the Sayelks uh, First Nations account of what was known as Nahaha Itku, or the spirit of the lake. And, and according, depending on who you talk to, they didn't necessarily see that spirit of the lake as anything good. Later in 1926, there were roughly 30 vehicles along a beachfront, and all the occupants of those vehicles saw a sighting of Ogopogo as well. One of the most notable that I'd like to uh, discuss with you um, is in 1978, and there's actually two we're going to discuss, and a man uh, crossing the bridge from the west side of Okanagan Lake in October of 1978 caught a movement in the lake and stopped his car. All the traffic, of course, behind him also stopped, and pretty soon there were about 20 onlookers gathered at the rail looking at it. And what they saw was a head with three black humps behind it, perhaps 60 meters or, you know, 200 feet away, protruding out of the water. They watched it for nearly a minute as it swam, after which time it suddenly disappeared, leaving a substantial wake as it, uh, you know, submerged beneath the surface. One of the uh, really pointed stories came by in 1986, and this is the location that we're going to be visiting first. We were thinking about Rattlesnake Island, but we're going to start a little closer here in Ellison, which is actually quite nearby, and that's Ellison Provincial Park, which is on Okanagan Lake, and we'll be looking at that very shortly. So this is an account from an individual. I was paddling a canoe near Ellison Provincial Park and my two girls were trolling for fish, eight and 10 years old at the time. Since it was near dusk and the stars were beginning to come out, we, had, we began to head back towards the dog beach at Ellison to head back to camp. It was a warm night, the lake was smooth as glass and a very quiet evening with no motorboats. We were about 100 meters or 300 feet or so from the beach when we noticed a rounded object on the water. It was not moving. Thinking it was something like a play toy or an inner tube, I decided to paddle over and investigate. As we approach, the first thing I noticed was a strong fishy smell. When the bow of the canoe was within a meter or so, we noticed it was about one foot wide by four feet long and had two rows of arrowhead shaped scales running along its length. It was dark green in color. We sat for 10 seconds as the kids reeled in their lines and we heard a sort of low moaning or growling noise. 
we realized that five to 10 meters ahead was a much larger head facing away from us silhouetted against the dust sky. It was about the size of a horse head and had horizontal conical shaped structure similar to horns. My kids turned and asked and I said it was Ogopogo. And at this juncture, just realizing what I had said, my hair stood straight up on my skin. My older daughter freaked out and demanded we head for shore. The creature appeared to notice we were there and slowly moved away. It did not move with any undulations, but moved with the head and hump in the same position. It was consistent with a large body underwater and a long folding neck. After moving off about 150 feet, it turned and looked at us and then submerged. The whole incident lasted nearly two minutes. I did have a camera in the boat, but was too shocked to think about trying to use it. So very interesting little story. Uh, that is the location we're going to go take a look at. And to do that, I'm going to pull up a little graphic here. So this is Okanagan Lake. And the really interesting thing about Okanagan Lake is it is known as a fjord lake. It is the product of multiple glaciations. It is 135 kilometers or roughly 85 miles long and has an average width of somewhere between four and five kilometers or two and a half and three miles. The interesting thing is, is that um, it, it is very deep, almost like a you know, a, a canyon that's been filled. So you can be within 30 feet of shoreline and suddenly you're in 300 feet of water. Now, even though we know that the, the main depth of the lake is roughly 232 meters, which is a significant depth, we're, we're talking, I don't know, 750 feet or so, some areas, because of the repeated advance and retraction of, of glaciers, that glaciation process, it's deposited up to 750 meters or 2,460 feet of material in the bottom of the lake. Now, there are numerous caves and multiple large structures underneath that have not been explored yet at depths past 100 meters as well as underground rivers that lead into the lake. So we're really, really looking forward to that. And I want to show you on this little map here. This is a map of Okanagan Lake. And we actually live, you know, basically right out here somewhere. So we're going to be traveling right here to where this road terminates on that little red dot. Well, that is Ellison Provincial Park. And that is the first place that we are going to explore and hunt for Ogopogo. Thank you for taking the time for watching our videos. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, please give us a thumbs up, and do turn on the notifications so when we start doing our underwater 4K videography and bringing you lots of interesting items, you'll be first to know about it. Take care, have a wonderful day.